This is uh, Brother Ryland. I'm here with my wife, Sharice. And we're going to be filling in for uh, Pastor Gary today. Hallelujah. So we're happy to be here, happy that you're here. And uh, praise God. We just believe God is up to something tonight. Uh, it's going to be a good night tonight. It's going to be blessed. Amen. So let's open up from pr in prayer. And uh, we're just going to let the Lord have his way in here today. Amen. So, Father God, we just... We just thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your blessings and for your goodness, Lord God. Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory. And we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and who you are in our lives. Father, this day we just cast off every care. We loose ourselves from the concerns of the day. Uh, we cast the care of everything onto you, Lord God, because you care for us. And Lord God, we just thank you for your peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. We ask that you would teach us today that your Holy Spirit would give wisdom and revelation and understanding. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So... Hallelujah. We're here again, and I'm happy to have my wife with me. This is the second time uh, she's had the opportunity to do this with me, and I'm just thankful uh, that she's here. Amen, honey. How are you feeling today? I'm doing well. Amen, amen. Happy to be here with you. Yes, yes. And uh, we thank uh, Pastor Gary and Pastor Faye for allowing us uh, to share with you today. And uh, as you know, Pastor Gary and Pastor Faye are traveling mm -hmm. and doing uh, missionary work. Um, if you've been watching the, um, the uh, 10 o'clock uh, YouTube videos, uh, they've been traveling in Tanzania and uh, I've been meeting with pastors and, and, and thousands of people and the Lord's been blessing that time. So we do just still commit that into your hands, Lord, and we thank you for watching over Pastor Gary, Pastor Faye, blessing them, protecting them, keeping them and using them. God, continue to give them divine appointments and work in them to will and to do of your good pleasure. In Jesus' name, we thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we were driving in today and we were just thinking about different things. And uh, one thing we were talking about was just God and how good he is and, and his nature and his mercy. And uh, I was sharing with my wife a particular testimony about uh, the goodness of God, the nature of God, probably something that she's heard plenty of times before. But mm -hmm. when I was uh, a youth at this church, at Victor Christian Fellowship, uh, Pastor Giff Wilson uh, was the youth pastor at the time. And uh, he took us on a trip. He took us on a, a youth uh, trip to Oklahoma. It was either uh, Tulsa or Oklahoma City. I don't remember uh, which year it was, but we went to a youth conference. It was called Youth America. And uh, at this conference, all these young people from all over the country uh, would gather and would spend time in worship and prayer. And speakers would fly in from all over the country to uh, minister to the young people. And, you know, people like even Jay Seculo, the uh, attorney, he was there talking about the ability to have Bible clubs in our schools and, and various uh, youth ministers were there. Um, and one particular thing that happened, and uh, uh, there was actually a worship leader who's just recently passed, his name was Danny Chambers, and he would, he would just lead us in the worship and lead us into the presence of God, and it was just awesome, amazing times in God's presence. And I remember one particular night, I couldn't have been more than 17 or 18, probably 17, and I remember being in the middle of this big crowd of young people and everyone's just crying out to God and seeking God and singing songs. And I'm in the middle of that crowd. And I remember just crying out to God. I remember crying out to God with everything that was in me. And I was probably pretty loud too when I was crying out to God and I'm speaking in other tongues and just praying and crying out to God and really looking for a visitation from God. Mm -hmm. And I probably had tears coming down my face because I was focused and passionate on experiencing God. And uh, the interesting thing was in the middle of all that praying and in the middle of all that worship, I, thoughts just started bubbling up in my heart. And the main thought was, 
I know God loves me. I'm crying out in desperation. But the fact of the matter is, is I know that God loves me. I know that he loves me. I know that he cares for me. I know. And I just remember shaking my head like, God, I, I know that you love me. I know that you care for me. I know. I know you do. And as, as I begin to say this to myself, all of a sudden, my prayer began to change. And instead of a cry of desperation, it became a knowing of the love of God. And right around that time, the presence of God just filled me. It was like God just dropped and infused and flooded me with his presence, flooded me to overflowing. And I was in such the glory of God that it was just overwhelming. And I remember that when the meeting ended, the presence of God was still so heavy on me that people went to go eat lunch uh, in the cafeteria that they had for us. But I just went up into the, the bleachers in that, in that uh, gym or auditorium, wherever it was, and I just began to just sit there because the presence of God was just so strong on me. I didn't really care about anything at that point. I just, I was in the glory of God and I was just receiving from God. And the reason why I wanted to bring that testimony up is because there was such a difference in the type of prayer that I began to pray and the type of prayer that I ended up praying. One was like, if I'm desperate enough, if I cry enough, if God sees how sincere and how focused I am, then he's going to come. The other was recognizing that he's already flooding. He's already pouring because he already receives me. I don't have to prove anything to him for him to love me. He loves me already. Mm -hmm. He's already here. He's already pouring out. And the difference in that, while it may seem minute, as I'm talking about it, in reality, it's night and day. It's night and day. And that's a little bit of what we want to talk about uh, this evening. We want to talk about the nature of God, faith, and the difference that, that I just gave in that example. So I just want to open it up with that. Um, Sharice, I don't know if I should ask you a question or if ask you just want to, question. do you want to comment on that? I think you should ask me a question. Well, the question would be, can you comment on that? <laughs> um, well, it's like um, we were talking about this in the car. Um, we were both in the car praying and on our way here tonight. And when he was sharing his testimony and I was listening to what he was saying, and the word that kept coming to my mind was to trust or to believe, just to believe what God says, what his word says, believe it. And I think a lot of times it's like we read the words, we think we know the words, and that's, that's actually the problem. It's like, but that experience, like really understanding, like connecting with what he's saying. You know, we were talking about our children, like how they don't do everything perfect, you know, but it's just as a parent, you love them so much that you're going to, you know, provide for them and, and give, you know, them things that they need just because you love them. And I... I was thinking about this song that I really love by Keith Green. It's like one of, I'm going old school for some people that don't know who Keith Green is, but there's a song, it's called, um, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. And I remember like, like you said, I was, we were in a situation where I was just like, oh God, I'm not gonna make it, I need you, what am I gonna do? And I, and I just, and I know that you love me and I know what your word says and I know what you told me. And then this, I just started playing the song. Actually, the song came up in my mind and I start playing the song, and the line that really hits me is this. Um, it says, oh Lord, you're beautiful, your face is all I seek. But this is the part that really broke me. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Mm. Your love, your mercy, your loving kindness, it flows towards me. Mm. And that's, that's what I was thinking about, like when you were sharing in the car just now. Amen, his grace abounds. His grace abounds. Um, you know, the nature of God, like, I guess what we're trying to say is that, you know, we were talking about works and we were talking about mm -hmm. the works of faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the works of faith are different from working to show our faith. The works of faith are different from working to prove our faith. Like, I know there are people out here that want answers from God and everything, but 
God wants us to labor. He does want us, want us to press in, like it says in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. But it says that we labor to enter into his rest. Right. We, we labor, but we labor to enter into his rest. Because the labor for me a lot of times is a labor to press into God to really see him for who he is. Because this world, the flesh, religion is always painting a different picture of God. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, you know, we default to these different pictures of God. It could even be because of our own upbringing, our own parents, mm -hmm. you know, having, you know, and uh, trust me, I mean, I, I have kids and I talk to them all the time about cleaning our room. I mean, my, my kids laugh at me and everything because, you know, I always tie things to uh, their chores and to the different things that we ask them to do. Mm -hmm. But the thing with God is that, God is not looking for us to do these actions so that he can bless us. God took the initiative with everything that he did. Like the Bible says in all things, he has the preeminence. He has the preeminence in every blessing that you experience in your life. If it's healing, it's because by his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. If it's provision, it's because he became poor so that you can have a full supply. If it's dealing with the enemy, mm -hmm. he has the keys of hell and death. Mm -hmm. and everything. He, mm -hmm. he led captivity captive and gave gifts, gifts on the men. He defeated principalities and powers, triumphing over them in his final glorious triumphant act, like it says in the book of Colossians. Everything that we receive from God is because he already went before us and paved the way and already did it. Mm -hmm. He did everything. There's nothing that we're getting because of our initiative. Right. Everything that we get from God is because of his initiative. It's always because of his initiative. And I feel like that's kind of like a, I'm not going to say a secret, but it's a key to receiving from God. It's, it's, it's something, it has to be that way because that's God's way. Mm -hmm. That's God's way. Mm -hmm. God's not going to do it religion's way. God's going to do it his way. And we're going to have to yield and fall in line with the way he does it, not the way we think it should be done. Like for instance, there's a story in the Bible, right? Uh, in, in Kings, right? Talking about Naaman and everything. And Naaman was part of a, a rival's army uh, against Israel. And by the way, if you're wondering why I always like break these things down and explain stories like, hey, we know who Naaman is, but I do youth ministry. And just to give you an example, we did a, so, a service this past Sunday, and we were talking about sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit. And uh, right around the end of the service, uh, a youth raised their hand and said, so can you explain like sewing? Is that like when you're sewing up a garment? Like mm -hmm. if you get a rip yeah. and you're sewing it up? Yeah. Because the term S-O-W was not used in this today's right. English. I mean, when you walk around saying, hey, I sewed this, only we do that in the church. So my point is, is that um, I'm just used to breaking terms down and bringing things down to like a basic level so that anybody can understand it and not using a lot of Christianese and vernacular and everything. So, you know, if I break down a story, you know, we, we, we have a youth ministry background. So, yeah. so that's what we do. So back to Naaman. So here's this guy, Naaman. He's in a rival army mm -hmm. and everything, but he has leprosy. Mm -hmm. And his maid, his servant, right, the maid in his house happened to be an Israelite and everything. I don't know if, if how they got a hold of her and everything, but she ended up in this rival country. She ended up a servant in the house. And uh, when Naaman got ne leprosy, of course, you know, that, you know, breaks down your body and your skin until you potentially could die, lose your limbs and different things. And uh, the servant girl said, hey, Naaman, you know, there's a prophet in Israel. And, uh, you know, he could pray for you and, and you could get healed or whatever. So Naaman goes to, uh, to his king and says, hey, write me a letter to go to this to this Israeli king. And, uh, and get this prophet guy, and he can pray for me so I can get healed. So the one king wrote to the other and said, hey, I know you got this prophet. Can he pray for my guy, for my, my guy Naaman and everything, and, and heal him? Just, just take care of that. So uh, the king of Israel is all afraid, like, what am I supposed to do with this? And then here's Elijah, and he says, hey, don't be afraid and everything. And uh, so Naaman goes to Elisha and is like, hey, look, he, he expects when he gets to him 
that he's going to come out of the house and do this miracle and, and glory is going to fall from heaven and heal him. And he didn't do that. When he got to the house, Elijah sent out a servant and just said, hey, tell him to go dip in the Jordan. Jordan's a dirty river. So this guy Naaman's like, go dip in the Jordan. Man, this guy's not a prophet. I'm going back to my country. But his servant said to him, if he asked you to do something that was really hard, wouldn't you have done that? If he, all he's saying is dip in the Jordan and be healed, then dip in the Jordan. So he dipped in the Jordan, he was healed. So the fact of the matter is, is God did it his way. God didn't do it the way he was thinking it should be done. And that's the same way it is with us. God does stuff the way he said he's going to do it in his word. Mm -hmm. God does stuff according to how he said he does it through Christ, through the cross. He's not doing it the way, the way we think. You want to share anything? <clears throat> um, no. All right. Well, I want to read a scripture. It's, You're going. it's in Romans chapter 5. And this scripture is talking about the love of God. And Romans chapter 5 says, it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though some for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. And I just think it's amazing, like, when we want to look at God's character, when we want to look at God's nature, that it says that when we were yet sinners, it was in that point that God took initiative toward us. Not when we were doing it right. Not when we were praying properly. Not when we were ministering or giving properly, mm -hmm. but when we were yet sinners, that's when God took initiative to reach us. That's when God took initiative. And to me, that proves his character. That proves his love. That proves how he feels about us. He felt that about us before we had did, done anything right. He felt that about us before we took the actions that we think are approved before God. He had already did it. And that demonstrates the very nature, the unconditional love that God has for us. That when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I don't know, that, that gives me such a confidence with God. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says faith works by love. Faith works by love. Mm -hmm. And when I know that he loves me, then I can trust him. When I know that he loves me, that he would send his son to die for me, that he would take the preeminence and do everything to move everything Satan tries to do in my life out of the way, to move everything that Satan tries to do in your life out of the way, because not because he had to, not because it was a duty, but because he loved you, mm -hmm. just because he loved you, just because he cares, just because it's, he is love. God is love. And that motivated him to do that. I'm telling you, like, that just gives me such a confidence with God, a confidence with God to trust him, to trust him. Anything you want to share about that? Um, I don't know. I feel like I shared everything I, I was, that I had to share regarding that. But I don't know. I just think that, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about all the scriptures that, talk about trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto, onto your own understanding. Because not only, you know, you have to trust him for where he's trying to take you or, you know, what the path that he's prepared for you, you have to trust that. And um, it just reminds me of this um, article that I read about, this is like not going to be like super spiritual, but I'm thinking about like the making of this particular video it was like this Michael Jackson video. And, um, so not endorsing that you watch Michael Jackson, but um, it was really interesting like how the director came up with all these ideas for this video, but at the end of the day, like the concept was all the tiles were gonna light up under Michael Jackson's feet everywhere he went. They were gonna light up. And then what happened was on the day of shooting, they found out they couldn't really light up all the tiles, only certain tiles were gonna be lit up. And he had to just, the director came, you know, was like, look, this is going to be lit up, but not this. I'm going to show you which ones are pre-lit, and those are the only ones that you step on. So 
the effect can be there of the video. And um, that's how it is with God. And the interesting thing about that was it wasn't like a straight line down or across. It was more like a hopscotch pattern. And I think with God, that knowing that he loves you and knowing that you can trust him, even when like he's trying to take you way over there and you don't know how you're going to get there because you're way over here, just knowing that he loves you yes. and you just trust him. Yes, and Lord. it's like, and it is kind of like a hopscotch pattern you, almost Lord. with God because it's not always, you know, the children of Israel when they were getting delivered out of Egypt, there was a better, a quicker way to go, a way that made more sense, but there was like a trust that I believe God wanted them to have yes. with him. Like, just trust me. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, I know it doesn't look the way you think it should look, but just trust me. And there's something that happens when you're in a situation where it's like, all you can do is trust God mm. and fall back on the fact that he loves you and mm -hmm. rest in that fact, that he'll deliver you. David had to do that time and time again, mm. running from Saul, running for his life. And it's just, and he's like, oh, they're coming to get, you know, but I know that you're going to deliver me. I know that you love me. You mm -hmm. see me. All of those things. And I think when you're in a difficult place, you just have to realize and remember that love. Just meditate on his word that talks about his love because that's exactly how he feels about you. It abounds towards you. It's like immeasurable. Like our minds can't comprehend it. And then you get to the next little impasse. God delivers you from that. And then you're like, wow, well, I know he did this. So as I continue to walk with him, that love, I know he's going to do the next thing. Yes, Lord. You know, and not because I'm so great or mm -mm. so good or so righteous. It's because he loves me just like your child. You do because you love your child, not because they're perfect, because they drive you crazy a lot. <laughs> At least we have all boys, so, and I'm the only female in the house, so trust me, they gang up on me a lot. But, you know, there's nothing that I wouldn't do for them with, you know, because I love them. That's it for me. Amen. I mean, it's, it's putting confidence in God's character. I mean, that's, you know, confidence in who he is, confidence in his nature, mm -hmm. confidence in his person, confidence in him. You know, the more we put confidence in who he is, Confidence in who we know he is. Mm -hmm. Confidence in his character, in his nature. Mm -hmm. That's what gives us motivation to actually move and to operate with him. And that's what gives us motivation to, to do the things that he tells us. It gives us boldness. Mm -hmm. It gives us boldness. It gives us, it gives us confidence because we love him because he first loved us. You know, we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I mean, maybe other people get it. I know for me, that has been an area that I always have to go back to. It's like we can get so busy doing work, so busy uh, just doing things that we have to get back to knowing the nature of God mm -hmm. and how much he loves us, mm -hmm. that he smiles at us, mm -hmm. that he dances over he us, delights. that he delights in us. Yep. I mean, God is not mm -hmm. angry with us. Mm -mm. God is not the great disciplinarian in heaven. He does discipline those he loves. That's right. But he's a father. He's a father. And I can promise you, my first motivation toward my sons is not discipline. My first motivation toward my sons is love. Mm -hmm. My first motivation toward my sons is to protect Mm -hmm. My first motivation toward my sons is to care for, right. to guide, to, to father, to raise, to train. All these things are coming out of a motivation of love that I have for them. Right. It's not just that they would do something great that I would be pleased or whatever like that. It's mm. I just I, I love them. Yeah, I love them. And I just feel like that's that's what God's extending toward us. And. When we know God in that type of a way, in that type of a character, yeah. man, there's just things that, that we begin to see, things that he begins to reveal, provision that begins to happen. And mm -hmm. I just want to pray. Yeah. I just want to pray that we will see the love of God. Like the Bible says that we would know the height, the depth, the length, the breadth, mm -hmm. to know the love of Christ mm -hmm. that passes all knowledge that we might be filled 
with the fullness of God. And, and that's my prayer today. My prayer today is that God would open the eyes of our understanding, would give us wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him, that we can see his love, mm -hmm. that we can see his nature, that we can see him for who he is mm -hmm. and who he is to us, because that's what changes us. The Bible says that we're transformed mm -hmm. from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. And it also says that as we behold him, that we're changed as we look, as we see him. Mm -hmm. And my prayer tonight is that we'll see him for who he is, that we'll see him for his, the nature of who he is, the nature, not just, I mean, I know he's all powerful. I know he's omniscient, but I, I want to know his ways. I want to know the type of God. I want to know the love of Christ. I want to know it. I want to know it. I want to know it. I, I don't want it to be something that, you know, I tell people from just because I can quote John 3.16. I want it to be so experienced in my life that it's overflowing. Mm -hmm. That perfect love casts out all fear that when I do go to witness or whatever, even if I am afraid or whatever, the love of Christ is compelling me. Mm -hmm. The love of Christ is overwhelming, overwhelming me because I've experienced it. And that, that's our prayer today is that that God will do that. So we're just going to pray. So Father, I just thank you that you, Lord, are revealing your love. Yes, Lord. That even as Paul said, that we would know the love of Christ, that we would know the height, the depth, the length, the breadth, that we would know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. It's not just something that we know in our heads. It's not just something that we can quote. It's not even just something we can explain. It, that we would know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge, Lord, mm -hmm. that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. God, yes. we want to we want to know you and experience you yes, Lord. because the more we know your love, the more we're going to reflect that love. The more we know your love, the more we're going to demonstrate that love. Yes, Lord. The more we know your love, the more we're going to be a reflection of it in this world. Yes, Lord God. And Lord, that's what we want. We want to be a reflection of your very nature in this world. We, we don't want to tell people about you. We want them to see you. Yes, Lord God. In us. We want them to see you, but we need to know that love of Christ. So God, reveal it to us. Open our eyes to see open our hearts to receive. And God, I just thank you that as you reveal, as you demonstrate in our lives, that we allow your love to overflow towards somebody else. Yes, Lord God. That we allow your love to pour out to those around us. But, but we need to see it, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I just, I feel that. I feel like there's people that you just need to know the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you need to know how much he loves you. Like I said, before we run in and take all these actions and I'm going to do and I'm going to do and I'm going to do. And God said, man, you, you need to, you know, you need to know my love. Mm -hmm. You need to see me for who I am. Not to prove anything. It's just he he loves you. So he's a father. Mm -hmm. He wants you just to know his love, not know his love because then you can this and that. Mm -hmm. Forget all that. He just loves you and wants you to know his love. He just loves you and wants you to know his love. And God, I just thank you that for those that need healing, yes, that Lord. you're binding up the brokenness of thank heart. You, Lord Jesus. You're restoring thank you, Lord hurts God. and pains and thank you, rejections. Thank you. God, you are healing right now. You are healing right now. You are binding up the brokenness of heart right now. You are restoring the breach right now. God restore, God heal right now. Yes, Lord, heal right now. Give deliverance, give peace, give restoration. Right there in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, yeah. in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just... I just feel, you know, God's presence moving, God's presence touching people and everything. And um, we're about to end, but I wanted to um, 
what was that, what was that, uh, what was it, Infuse? Oh, yes. Um, Somebody had uh, shared something today okay. on Facebook. It was actually one of uh, the pastors at this church. Uh, her name is uh, Jackie Parker. Yep. Or Pastor Jacqueline. Okay. Do you have it? Yes. Right there. Yeah. So I want to read uh, this thing that she had posted. It's, it's the word infuse, I-N-F-U-S-E. And the definition is soak, to extract the healing properties. Soak, to extract the healing properties. And I just feel like that's what God is saying to do. God is saying, I want to infuse you. But sometimes for God to infuse, you got to soak. You know, let's not be so quick. We're going to have to be quick to get off of this, uh, this webinar because this is about to end. Yeah. But I encourage you not to be quick to get out of his presence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to soak to extract the healing properties and just spend time in his presence, yes. just receiving from him, allowing him to heal, allowing him to pour out, just infusing us, infusing us with his nature, with his peace, with his grace, with his boldness, with his word. Yes, as you sometimes scriptures bubble up, a lot of times when that happens, then I know that, all right, that's my time to now go to the word of God. Now crack open the word and start meditating. This morning that happened in uh, 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 the uh, John, uh, uh, third John, third John chapter one. That's what I was reading and just soaking in that. But I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to just stay in this peace of God. Hallelujah. Stay in this presence of God, hallelujah, and be blessed in that. We are going to have to end this webinar, <laughs> so we're just going to pray. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Father, we just thank you for yes, everyone Lord. that joined us tonight, and yes, we just Lord. pray that you would bless them, yes, Lord. that you would keep them, and that your face would shine upon them, Lord yes, God, Lord. and that you would give them shalom. God, shine on us, God. Shine that we can see you for all that you are, Lord God. Hallelujah. As you bring transformation and changes in our lives and in the lives of everybody around us, including our families, God, that you would save everyone, God. Hallelujah. That everyone would be taught of the Lord and great would be their peace, God. We just speak all their households will be saved in Jesus' name. Yes, and we bless the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.